morning. Good morning and uh, great to be with you and pray that God will minister to us today by the power of his word. The Samoan hymnal was pain with tremendous passion but also pain with tremendous biblical understanding. I am amazed every time I sing those Samoan hymns and look at the content of the hymns and the biblical content, the depth of that. I came to a conclusion that even if I just preach the Samoan hymnal for the rest of the year, it will be a fantastic thing. Some time ago, I was uh, speaking at a conference in Samoa and, and talking about the adopted. And then I quoted a hymn about the adoption of sons and daughters by God. <coughs> it's a personal conversation with God saying, Abba Father, I thank you. Your love for me has been preeminent, and in, in, it, it was in that love that you adopted me as a son. So I went through the hymn, quoting the hymn, and making points as I go through the stanzas of the hymn. And uh, I remember a man who was in his late 40s, early 50s, and he was a son of a Samoan minister of the mainline church. And I remember what he said. He said to his friends and uh, his friends were talking about it, and he walked away shaking his head. We were having a meal. He's had his uh, meal, and then he got up, grabbed his Bible, and just walking away, shaking his head and talking to himself. And he said this, how can a man sing a song all his life and not understand the content of that song? He was talking about the adoption about the love of God that has adopted people and God saying, I'm the father of the fatherless, I'm the defender of widows. I set the solitary in families and bring out those who are bound into prosperity. So out of bondage into prosperity and God taking those without fathers, without mothers, those that have been raised by others, those that are orphans, taking them under his wing and saying, I'm the father of the fatherless. I can still picture that man walking away, shaking his head, talking to himself. He wasn't a young man, but as a son of a minister, he's been singing that song ever since he was a kid. And now he's a grown man with a family of his own. All of a sudden, God revealed to him the content of his heart and the content of that hymn. There is another hymn that I wanted to uh, share with you this morning. And it, it, it goes like this. Um, it means that everything is good. Everything is good that Jehovah has made. It says it has filled the heavens and has filled the earth. And then at the end of that, it says, thank you. Thank you to the one that is good referring to God. God is good. The psalmist said, know we that the Lord, he is good. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his children and the sheep of his pasture. And then it says, it says, uh, the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. God is a good God. God is not an evil God. God is not a bad God. God is a good God. And when Oral Roberts popularized that, many of the clergy did not like it. They said, you can't say God is good. And Oral will say, well, is he bad? They said, no, no. But when you say God is good, it makes it easy for people to get to God. Well, that's exactly right. God wants to make it easy for us to get to him. It is us that stand in the way of sinners. I know that I am probably taking that out of context, but many religious people stand in the way of sinners finding the Savior. God is a good God. 
And God demonstrated his goodness to us through everything. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sun comes up. The rain falls down. The trees are green. All these things reveal the goodness of God. I was driving with a, a couple of sisters and my wife. They are friends of uh, my wife and I. And they came from uh, Honolulu to uh, sing here in New Zealand. And I was uh, driving them and they were sitting at the back of us. My wife was in the front with me and I was driving and I said to them, has it ever occurred to you why, why God made the earth green? It's a color of grace and it relaxes us. Can you imagine what it would be like if God made the earth red? If everything you see is red or if everything you see is blue? No, God made the earth green and the sky blue. There is a reason why it's the wisdom of God and the goodness of God. So this, this hymn says, Everything Jehovah has made is great, is fill the heavens and the earth. Thank you, thank you to the one that is good. The second stanza goes like this. It says, it, it makes us know his power, his power that has been revealed like the dawning of light. And then it says, Love and wisdom, he created all things. Thank you, thank you to the one that is good. It says, Love and wisdom, he created all things. He created all things by his wisdom. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, a house is established. By knowledge, the house is filled. Now, we talk about that. How does wisdom come? Fear of God. What is understanding? It's the knowledge that God is holy. How does, how does knowledge come? Same thing, wisdom comes by the fear of God. And God has created the earth and the heavens by wisdom, but it was love that made him do it. It was the motivation in God's heart. It was love. The songwriter said, love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else will help. Love, it was love that lifted me. And the Bible says, God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved and out of that love he gave. And he did not give just the sunshine. He didn't give just the rain. He didn't give just the provision for the birds of the air and the fishes of the sea. He didn't just give for us as human beings. He, didn't, he could have done all those. But God's love gave us Jesus Christ. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And Paul said, if God has given us his son, how shall he not with his son also give us all things? So today, even the sinner, even the wicked, even the murderer woke up to the sun rising. That's God's love. That's God's goodness. It doesn't mean that God condones the wickedness, but it means that he loves even the sinner. Where sin abounds, grace much more abound. Where sin abound, love much more abound. And the Bible said this, the law came by Moses, but love, grace, mercy, and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace is the motivation. Love is the motivation. Why God created all things and provided for us. And he said to us, look at the birds of the air. 
Look at the fish of the sea. Look at the beasts on the field. Who feeds them? I do. If I feed the birds of the air and I feed the beasts on the field, how shall I not care for you when you and I are created in the image of God? We are made in his image. As we said a few Sundays ago, when God created the fish, he first of all created the sea, and then he created the fish for the sea. But what he did, he spoke to the sea and said to the sea, bring forth the fish. He spoke to the dirt, to the earth, to bring forth the trees and the animals. But when he created you and I, he did not speak to the earth. He did not speak to the sea. He spoke to himself, come, let us make man in our image. And then he formed our substance, our physical substance, out of what was already created out of the dust of the ground. But our spiritual being that is made in the image of God. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So we are created in the image of that spirit. And God breathed into us the breath of life. And you and I became living souls. When we die, the physical part of us will go back to where he came from. But the spirit will go back to God who gave it. God loves us. God created us because he loved us and he still does. When he looked at Adam, he realized that Adam, even though he would come down and walk with Adam every day in the cool of the day, he looked at Adam and while everything he created could relate to, to other things, Adam could not relate the same way to a tree, to the dirt, that he could relate to another human being. So God created Eve, caused Adam to go to sleep, and out of Adam, he created this woman. And the image of God is carried by male and female. God created them in the image of God, male and female. He created them. So God created Eve for relationship. For Adam, he said, it's not good that a man should be alone. I'll make of him a helpmeet who will be one that will help him, they can walk with him, and he will be able to relate to them. Everything is built and made for relationship. The bird relates to the air, the fish relates to the sea. We relate to God, but we also relate to one another. When we fell, when Eve fell and separated from God, Eve was fell by deceit. Adam fell by rebellion. Many times we say that was Eve. Well, Eve was deceived, but Adam rebelled. God created another way. God made another man. The second Adam. And through that Adam, through that second, through Jesus Christ, God created a way for you and I to be reconnected with God. God's not angry at you. I know that there is a scripture in the Bible that says, God is angry with the wicked all day long. I know that's in the Bible. That's also in the Old Testament. But when, when God created this new way, and God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. The angels came to declare that Jesus was born. And uh, they said to the shepherd today is born unto you a, a savior. And they declared 
peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Goodwill. God is good. God's goodwill to all men. And even this morning, God's goodwill is towards you and me. God's not angry at you. God does not hate you. God's goodwill, it came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And that love is towards us today. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The way is love. Truth is the message. And life is the result. God created all things. Love and wisdom. He created all things. And today, God has not changed. God is the same God. God hates sin, but he doesn't hate the sinner. God hates the sin and wants to deal with the sin so that the sinner can find the Savior. The sinner can become a saint. Glory be to God. And I know we are in lockdown. And many times uh, when we are in lockdown, we think, what is going on? But one of the things about lockdown, and I mentioned it before to our church, I am amazed at how quick people respond in obedience to that. If we could have the same quickness to respond to the love of God, how much great the world would be and how much powerful the church would be. When lockdown came, I was in Bahia at a meeting of the executive of the Assemblies of God. And I said to them, well, we have to get home because uh, uh, Auckland, if you fly to Auckland, you get locked down for seven days. And uh, so we hop in the car and we drove. We drove from uh, Bahia, uh, filled up the car in Kawakawa. And then uh, drove to Whangarei. The driver said that, that the lights of the cars are too glary. So I drove from Whangarei to Papakura, where we uh, stopped for a, a break. And then somebody else drove, the owner of the car, drove from Papakura to Tequiti. My son and my grandson drove from here to Tequiti and picked me up on Tuesday night. We got home on Wednesday morning at 4 o'clock. But it is amazing to me that when things are desperate, we take desperate actions. And I'm amazed at how quick the country can, can agree on a commandment given by the prime minister. And yet God has given us his son for thousands of years. And many people don't respond to that love and that grace. One of the things that I find that if you are restricted to love, many people all of a sudden will love. I was an interpreter at a court case of a young man in, in, in the courthouse. And uh, he was going to jail. I was there to interpret for him for the understanding of the court and for his understanding about the ruling of the court. But it's amazing how at that moment he cried and really understand and value his family and those that are loved ones because now he's going to be restricted from seeing them, from relating to them because he was going to jail. And sometimes if we understand life and the purpose of God, sometimes People will respond greatly when they are locked down. It will be great if they respond greatly to the right thing. Many times we love loved ones and uh, that's fine as long as they're alive. But when they pass, that love is really, really, uh, what's the word, uh, becomes very, very heightened and acute. Why? 
because we won't see them again unless you are a Christian and they are a Christian. They are not lost to us. They have just gone home, just like here, going home. And even though I've been here for many, many years and I've got a home here, I've also got a home in Samoa. And when I go to Samoa, people say, where are you going? He said, I'm going home. But I haven't seen my sisters at home for a long time, but they are home. But I don't miss them as much. But if they pass away, I'm going to miss them a lot. Because restrictions often heightens our awareness that we love people. And this restriction, let us be aware. Let it heighten our love for fellowship. Let it heighten our love for connection. Let it heighten our love for Jesus Christ. It is the history of the church that it, many times when the church is restricted, the church seems to arise in the midst of the restriction. The underground church in China, in other countries where the church is uh, restricted, seem to thrive when they are locked down. The gospel thrives when it locks down. Let our love thrive when we are locked down. Our love for God, our love for our loved ones, our love for life, and our love for the lost. Let our love be heightened. Many, many things and many, many people have done great when they are locked down. Pilgrim's Progress was written by John Bunyan. When he was in jail let us uh, from the jail were written by uh, Martin Luther King jr. and I think they were called letters from the Birmingham City Jail I think it was and then you got Mel Nelson Mandela who uh, wrote conversations with myself those were pain from jail and many, many more. But the ones that I want to share with you is what Paul did. Paul wrote the epistles. It's like the jail was made for him to write to the world, to declare the goodness of God, to live for God. And when we do wrong, how do we get back to God? And he wrote those letters, restricted and locked down in jail. If he wasn't locked down, the epistles will never be written for us. Let this time of lockdown heighten our love for God, heighten our love for each other, heighten our love for fellowship. Understand that God loves us. And God gave his son for us, that we in turn might give our lives for others. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord do you good. May his, may his favor rest upon you and your family. And may this time of lockdown be a time where God can speak to you and where you can uh, sit still and know that God is good. May it be a time where your heart reaches out, not just to the Savior, but to uh, others. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and honor you today. We pray for those who under the sound of my voice. I pray to God that you will bless them and touch their lives and minister to them. I pray this time of lockdown will heighten our love for one another, for you, for your goodness and for your blessing. Help us to appreciate all that you've done and help us to share that which you have given to us with those less fortunate than us. I'm going to finish my prayer but uh, shortly, but before I do, if you're listening to me and you've never made Christ the Lord of your life, why don't you give your life to Jesus? He loves you. He's prepared heaven for you. He died for you, gave you his life, gave you his blood that your sins might be forgiven, that you might make heaven your home. It's a great day to give your life to the Lord. While in lockdown, 
not able to go to church in your own home you can give your heart to jesus give your life to him who gave you life in the first place if that's you you want to respond i'm going to pray and i want you to pray the prayer that i'm going to pray and ask christ into your life i had to do that and uh, it'll be great if you do that for yourself today it's the greatest gift that you'll ever give to yourself is accepting what god has given to the world let's pray dear lord jesus just follow my prayer dear lord jesus i come to you today i recognize i'm a sinner and i recognize also that you love me and gave your son for me that in believing in him and what he done I may enter your family and become a child of God. And today, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me from all iniquities, transgressions, and sins. I accept you as my Savior. I believe that you are alive and I believe that God, God has raised you from the dead and you live. I give my life to you and ask you, Lord, to be my savior, to be my God, to be my king. I will serve you the rest of my days. Help me, Lord to walk with you by faith and to live in victory. Thank you, Lord. I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I pray that God will bless you. I want you to read your Bible. God will talk to you and I want you to pray every day. And if you're able to, you can get back to the church and, uh, let us know what you've done so we can send you some material and information so that uh, you are able to uh, grow in your newfound faith. If you could email the church the um, or phone the church, the telephone is uh, 06345-0265 and let us know what has happened to you. And we will see that uh, you get the information and get people in touch with you so that you may grow. May God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Amen.